think I made a bit of a mess. And that's okay. I just realized that I haven't had a chance to actually sit down with you in a while just to let you know what has been happening in my life. And it has been relatively calm, which is good. And things have been going very well. I've had the odd glitch here and there because life happens. That's just one of my expressions. Whenever I'm faced with a stressor, I usually just go, life happens. And face it, we do need some stressors in our life. If everything was just so calm all the time and pristine, it would really be hard to enjoy oneself or appreciate uh, things in life such as victories. And if everything was predictable and calm, there wouldn't really be much in the way of excitement. And victories often involve stressors because it usually involves something that you are fighting for and sometimes fighting against. But all in all, things have been going pretty well. I've just set up my oolong tea. And if you're wondering what I was doing at the beginning, um, I just like to rinse the tea leaves very briefly um, into another cup. Just to sort of wash it. You don't know what the processing has done to the tea leaves itself. I mean, it comes from a foreign country, it gets dusty, there's little pieces of dirt. It's always a good idea to wash the tea leaves a little bit before you actually do your first pour. And I believe if you look at some of the tea ceremonies out there, I think you'll find that they encompass that, that initial wash. I'm going to have to wait for a few minutes for this tea to actually be ready. I didn't use like piping hot, boiling profusely water. I find that tea is better, especially this kind of tea here. Um, it's much better if you have it, the water boiling, and then take it off the stove for just a little bit until the boiling settles down and the water is pretty much calm. And then pouring it into, uh, into your teapot, it just makes for a much better cup of tea that way, or tea that I appreciate. And I, I'm finding too that I'm getting much better at brewing the oolong tea. I've read several times that uh, there are certain flavors in an oolong tea that you look for. It's almost like a subtle vanilla aftertaste. And when you get that, you know that you've brewed it properly. So since I finally figured out how to brew it to the point where I'm really satisfied with it, I find that I've been drinking a lot more of it. Uh, the cup that I have, this is very special to me because this cup was something that my parents had picked up when they were in Toronto. I believe it was a Canadian National Exhibition and this would have been in the latter part of the 1970s. But if you flip the cup over this was actually made in the USSR. So it's a an official Cold War cup. I also notice that made in the USSR is in English. So the cup was actually intended for export all along. And I do love the patterns on this. Um, it comes in a set of two, at least my parents brought home two from Toronto and I've always admired them uh, from the time that I was a child. 
I was probably about 13 or 14 years old when my parents uh, brought these home and I got into the hobby of shortwave radio and listening to broadcasters from around the world, international news from the BBC, The Voice of America, Radio Moscow, Radio Peking International, as it was called back then. And so when I saw something like this, this really did capture my eye. I actually love the two cups. And beneath the flowers, you have the red dots. They look like they must be berries. But it's actually uh, raised, very, very raised paint on the surface of the cup. And officially, I believe this would be a coffee cup, but I like to use it for my tea, just because there's so many really great memories that are attached to that cup. What has been happening? Well, oh, there's so much to tell you. It's uh, hard to figure a place to uh, begin. I guess I will start off with what I've been doing over the last uh, few weeks and uh, one thing involved a bit of a birthday bash I had a um, just a quiet get together with my son uh, he's been over a few times recently once for um, his birthday and often I just like to have him over and we will sit and we'll binge watch a television show and then we will watch one or two episodes, maybe three, and then we'll shut everything down. And then we'll just sit and we talk, maybe over tea or a coffee, or sometimes it's uh, even as simple as just having some water. Anyhow, it always turns out to be a food fest. And uh, the last time that he was here, it was, uh, oh my God. It was just incredible. I can't believe the food that we went through. And this was immediately following Thanksgiving. We had pork chops and broccoli with baked potatoes. And there were figs. And there was pie. And there was ice cream. And there were mixed nuts. And there were potato chips. So there was no shortage of food to eat that night. And I think we sampled just about everything. And by the time we were done, I think I had to um, put my belt buckle a notch down. Wow, I still can't believe how much we ate that night, but it's uh, a lot of fun and having my son over um, every once in a while like that. and we, It's almost like this routine that we have. It's so much fun and he's so interesting. I get so much out of talking with him because he has a lot of the same interests that I do that nobody else really seems to want to talk about or is interested about. So, commonalities, it's uh, really something. How's this tea looking? I'm thinking. Oh, I think that that's ready. I think we can try this. So my son coming over was one thing and I'm having to get used to a new time zone for my daughter because she has moved. I'll pour this first. Oh my, this smells really good. If you're going to go out and buy a really good tea, I highly recommend Oolong. There we go. And I'll give 
this a sip. This has turned out just about perfect. Oh, there we go. So my daughter, when I think about everything that she has done and all of the different time zones that she has uh, been in, she is still in school. Uh, she's been bouncing around uh, from country to country over over the years. Uh, I'm very suitably impressed with all of this because she's getting to do all of the things that I would have liked to have done when I was younger. And she just decided to take the bull by the horns and just go out and do it. So I'm very, very amazed because uh, she did all of the prep work on her own, looking for the assistance that she would need to uh, make it happen. So she started off going to school in Ontario, here in Canada. And then, quite suddenly, did an about face and moved to Latvia. Uh, to the city of Riga, where she went to school, studying international law. And she stayed at that university for a year before deciding to take her studies to a town or city called Groningen, and that is in the Netherlands. And she finished up um, her first university degree there, and in the midst of that, there was a placement in Prague in the Czech Republic. And then she had to go back to the Netherlands. And she parked herself there up until recently. And now she has uh, completed uh, a degree. I'm not sure exactly what the titles of these certificates are from country to country, so if you're not following, um, just bear with me on it. Uh, but she has more schooling to go through, and she won't be done, probably not until she's in the latter part of her 20s. Uh, but she is now five hours away from me instead of six. Uh, she is going to school in England in a very prestigious uh, university in the United Kingdom. So that has kept me on my toes and I've been bubbling over with all sorts of enthusiasm just watching uh, my kids and seeing all of the accomplishments uh, that they do. I'm always so proud of them and my friends uh, think that I, I strut it like a peacock, just like any proud father would. Um, on to the topic of ASMR. I wanted to let you know, I don't think I mentioned this in any of my videos, so I'm going to mention it now. I have a proto page. It's a web page. And I'm going to link to it in the video in the description. In that proto page, you will see a bunch of different videos and I will change them out intermittently. I just changed uh, three or four of them tonight. And they're just examples of some of the videos that I watch that I'm extremely impressed with because of the ASMR triggers in them that really hit me personally. And if you don't like any of those videos, that's okay. Because ASMR is very personal. So I acknowledge that my triggers might not, they might not be your triggers. And I can totally respect that. Um, I'm not going to say that one person's video is better than another. But you probably realize that. Um, some of the videos that are new that I don't think that I've 
ever had up there before. Oh my goodness, there's this one that is just so awesome for me. Uh, I've mentioned the White Rabbit uh, a few times. She has a video out of, uh, well, it's a role play where she's playing Frida Kahlo, the famous um, artist. And uh, quite an incredible historical figure in her own right for everything that she did for uh, women. Anyhow, uh, completely triggered with the uh, Frida Kahlo video. It just hits absolutely everything that is a trigger for me. Um, Ella, the... Uh, the white rabbit herself, Ella, is wearing these earrings that make this tinkling noise. It's really, really subtle, but it still, it, it grabs you. And her voice, the, uh, the softness of her voice, uh, the rhythm of her voice, the cadence, the tone of her voice, absolutely everything is just perfect in there. And to top it all off, she is brushing a paintbrush uh, at the same time. It's kind of like a Bob Ross experience. She captured the paintbrush sound absolutely perfectly. And she actually was painting at the same time as well. And she showed her work a little bit later on, I think it was in a different video or through her Patreon account, but she's an extremely talented artist as well. And like I said, you'll see that on the uh, proto page that I put up. There is a direct link to the video. Um, I've been playing that one a lot to help me get to sleep at night, uh, just because it has it was done so well. Um, I've also put a link to a video from Relaxing ASMR, just to give you an example of what I perceive to be as a really good male producer producing ASMR videos. Ironically, his voice is not in the video that I shared with you. Um, but I'm sure that I will link to others um, in the future. Uh, the video that I linked to was Vintage Writing Sounds. And I think it's probably his most popular video of all time. And there's no talking in it, like I said, but he's well worth exploring. Uh, once you're on the channel, if you really enjoy that video, try some of the other videos as well. He really does have this sense for um, antiques and things that are retro. And I just find that most of the time when I hear that voice, within a few seconds, I'm just completely chilled. <laughs> I'm so relaxed. He's such a great producer. And I don't think he has, like, hundreds of thousands of viewers i think he's probably i don't i don't want to guess i'd probably say like maybe under a hundred thousand and i can't believe that he doesn't have more because his material is so good but maybe he doesn't promote his channel uh very much and is just um producing for the sake of producing and letting that stuff out and spread by word of mouth um if so, he's a well-kept secret, and I highly recommend that you go visit his channel. Another new one that I have discovered, and she has been around for about a year now, and I think that this particular artist uh, could very well be very big in the future, and I think that she's getting there. Uh, the name of the producer is, uh, uh, the name of the channel is Ashley Marie ASMR. And the video that I have linked is Sketching Your Face. 
and these links take you directly to YouTube so their channel is going to get the credit their channel is going to get the hit um, on the video and this particular video she has this way of using her voice that reminded me a lot of another video that I absolutely loved and that was from uh, one of another one of my favorites goodnight moon ASMR when she did the uh, night shade witch transformation so definitely um, if you like goodnight moon ASMR I think you would probably like this particular video and I don't mean to compare the two um, however I just couldn't think of any other way of really describing um, this particular uh, video with the way that Ashley Marie ASMR is using her voice in this um, given a span of some more time I think that her channel is going to really take off as well it's not too common where you see somebody who um, only has like a year of experience on YouTube and they have that kind of talent I think she just needs a little bit of time and I think that she's going to do well so that is it for the ASMR that I have been listening to and I will keep updating you and I will again have future videos where I'm rummaging through magazines and I'm thinking about putting together another story for Halloween uh, the Edgar uh, Edgar Allan Poe video that I did seemed to garner a number of hits so uh, I don't have like a large following but I'll just take that as a sign that uh, that might be the route to go another Halloween uh, story perhaps that might just uh, that just might fit in very well it is the month of October anyhow that's it uh, for now I just wanted to sit down oh it's perfect and have a chance to have a bit of tea and just ramble on for a little while and hopefully you find that my monotonous droning voice is going to help put you to sleep. Because that is basically what it is all about. Oh, one more thing I did not want to forget. I had a slip this month. I got very, very stressed out over something. Um, and it was the one blip in my month and I managed to handle it very well but just I remember it's just so easy to slip back into old habits and you really can do that if you don't catch yourself and I didn't catch myself immediately but I did um, quick enough anyway it was over somebody that uh, something that somebody had uh, said and after the fact and this is just something that I want to relay on to you I know a lot of the people on my channel have anxiety issues or sleep issues or might have some trauma issues. I need to remind myself, like when I slip back like that, my fallback is like I'll start beating up on myself and the old self-talk starts up again. And it's so easy to get sucked into that. But just remember, like, if you do get stressed out or if something really does pull you down into that pit for uh, a little bit, it's not the end of the world. And when you are on a healing journey or when you are trying to address anxiety issues, things don't get better in a straight line. There are peaks and troughs. And it would pay to be kind to yourself and allow yourself those peaks and those troughs. I guess it's hard because when you hit a peak, when things go really well, and you're thinking, yeah, like I finally did it, just remember, 
life happens and there's going to be things that are going to bring you down but every time that happens it's an opportunity to build yourself back up again uh, just because there's a trough doesn't mean it's the end of the world and it doesn't mean that all of the work that you've already done is all gone and means nothing now, my trough was minor uh, compared to a lot of the people I know but I see others who have been less fortunate than me but I see how hard they work and they get into a real trough and I see them rise and pick themselves up and hit that peak again and I'm just like so proud of them when they do that kind of thing but it's just it's a good reminder to me that not to let myself get down when I do wind up uh, dipping down into that trough again you know, here's the mental health nurse um, getting his mental health advice from the clients that he serves they definitely make me stronger and have helped make me into the person that I am today. Uh, you're beautiful and all my clients are beautiful and never uh, let yourself think otherwise when life gets you down, okay?